So uh, first, uh, in terms of the examination of the foot and ankle, it, I think we can start with observation. So having the patient simply stand and looking at their alignment, I generally ask the patient to have their feet about a shoulder width apart and ask them to relax. So stand like you normally stand, don't show off for me, uh, and uh, assess alignment. So we're looking for flat foot deformity, uh, we're looking for a cable varus alignment. Um, those are uh, multi-plane deformities that um, can be observed with simple standing. Uh, the other thing to do is to have the patient turn around, so face the wall, and look at the, all of this uh, in the same way uh, from posteriorly. Uh, and, and I think that the heel alignment is especially appreciated when looking from uh, posteriorly. Next, next uh, point which is helpful is to have the patient just simply walk. So if you can walk forward for me and turn around and come back. Looking at overall lower extremity alignment, including at the knees, uh, and um, generally I do this in the hallway, it's easier to see than in a closed space. Next I'll have the patients uh, sit up on the exam table. So uh, just assessing sensation, so the dorsal aspect of the foot, this is a cursory exam, but uh, get overall uh, sense, so this is superficial perineal nerve, you do lateral border of the fit, foot for the sural nerve, the lateral plantar ner nerve is on the plantar lateral aspect, uh, plantar medial nerve uh, comes over on, on this uh, medial plantar side. Observation includes the skin, looking for edema, you can check for any sort of pedal edema um, is helpful. Uh, checking for pulses or Dursali's Petty's pulse um, over the, um, as well as the posterior tibial, tibialis pulse. And these I generally do with uh, at the same time, meaning right and left sides, um, just to see if I get symmetry uh, between the two. And check for any abnormalities. Next, I'll generally do an assessment of range of motion. So ankle dorsiflexion all the way up as far as you can. Ankle plantar flexion as far down as you can, up once again. I'll do that in, in a position of knee flexion as well as knee extension. This is essentially the silver scold test all the way back, all the way forward. A patient who has Achilles, uh, I'm sorry, who has gastrocnemius contracture will have a difference between uh, with the knee extended and knee flex, and we try and appreciate that. Next is just passive assessment of uh, subtalar motion, so eversion, inversion, eversion, inversion. These can all be uh, compared to the opposite side. Checking for both, you can check for transverse tarsal motion, which is holding the heel and going into abduction and a or adduction uh, of the foot. Also can assess for pronation, supination, looking for stiffness in those planes. Uh, then, uh, uh, depending on what you're assessing, you can uh, check for motion of the hallux or not. Um, the, the next part is just a, a detailed examination in terms of location of pain. It's really helpful to have the patient point to it with one finger um, and then just kind of systematically working through things. So fibula, medial malleolus, checking along the ankle joint line, so anteromedial, central, anterolateral, all uh, can be areas of pain. Checking the sinus charsi or the soft spot of the, of the uh, ankle. And then you can pretty much palpate the joints across the foot, um, calcaneal cuboid, the talonavicular joint is best assessed by uh, putting a finger on the joint and then going into adduction and abduction. The spot where it really feels like it's moving from, that's a good way to assess for that joint. And then once I've determined where that talonavicular joint is, in terms of abduction or adduction, then it's easy to just work up towards the navicular and what's called the end spot coming across uh, that aspect of the joint. Um, in addition uh, to that, you can assess the posterior tibial tendon coming around the posterior aspect of the distal tibia and down towards its insertion onto the navicular. The uh, plantar fascial origin um, is assessed here, just pushing on the bottom of the foot. Um, and uh, in terms of, a of uh, assessment of the forefoot, you can check for Mulder's click by squeezing the forefoot, 
bringing the toes into plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, feeling for uh, a click in that area, seeing if there's pain with squeeze testing, uh, range of motion of the hallux and the dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. On standing, you can assess the overall alignment of the foot, inclu including the hallux um, at that time. Assessing stability of the MTP joints. So it's really a Lachman test of each of these joints. You can palpate obviously on any of these joints to see if they're painful or tender. Metatarsalgia can be assessed by palpating the plantar aspect of the foot or the metatarsal heads and kind of working across the forefoot on that plantar side all the way to the fifth. The sesamoids are along the medial side. You can, assess, you can push on the medial sesamoid, the lateral sesamoid, and, and, and do that in motion. Uh, injuries of the metatarsophalangeal joint, like a turf toe, you can check in multiple planes, um, also including uh, varus or valgus uh, stress testing. The syndesmosis can be tested by an external rotation stress test, which is essentially immobilizing the uh, tibia and fibula and then doing an external rotation stress test of the foot and to try and elicit for pain. You can palpate along the syndesmosis itself, uh, assessing for pain. And then the squeeze test is a squeezing maneuver to assess for pain, uh, again, at the, along the syndesmotic, syndesmosis. The uh, perineal tendons can be palpated along the uh, posterior aspect of the fibula and wrapping around the fibula down towards the lateral aspect of the hind foot. The perineus brevis inserts on the uh, fifth metatarsal base uh, and runs along uh, the, uh, with the perineus longus uh, along the hind foot. The anterior tibial tendon is uh, in the front. You can assess for these tendons by stressing the, pa stressing the tendon itself. So hold your ankle up. Find with the anterior tibial tendon, it really sticks out if you just do that simply. Uh, and, and palpating it and down towards uh, its insertion, cuneiform, base of the first metatarsal. The uh, Achilles tendon in the back, you're really assessing for areas of uh, tenderness. Generally, it's going to be down at the insertion if they're tender um, or at the non insertion, uh, four or six centimeters proximal, uh, generally, four or six centimeters proximal to the insertion. Um, again, assessing for um, areas of tenderness along here. There's provocative tests uh, for impingement, which is bringing the ankle into full dorsiflexion and uh, seeing if they have pain with that. If they say no to that, generally you can push on the area that where you're suspicious of impingement and uh, go into the same position to see if that's painful. The test for posterior impingement is, a, is, a, is also a uh, passive test of bringing the ankle into door into plantar flexion and seeing if that elicits posterior pain. Uh, the flexor hallucis uh, longus running posterior medially uh, can be assessed with range of motion of the hallux and deep palpation posteriorly. Um, it, it runs posterior lateral to the posterior tibial tendon uh, and um, medial to the Achilles and deep uh, in the back of the ankle. Thank you.